Reading for February 12th, Science of Mind, The Philosophy of Faith, A Way of Life by Ernest Holmes. Reading from page 102, paragraph 4, through page 104, paragraph 2, using inclusive language. Unity and Multiplicity The stuff out of which our human bodies are made is the same etheric substance from which all things are made. The one mind conceives all things. From unity, which is the one, back of all things, through the one law, which is the medium of all action, multiplicity is manifested, but the many never contradict the unity of the whole. When we realize that we are dealing with an infinite intelligence and with an infinite law within this intelligence, we see that no limit should be placed upon the creative principle. Could we understand absolute causation, we should perceive it to be pure intelligence operating through perfect law and producing effects which live and have their being not by virtue of an isolated life, but by reason of a universal unity which permeates all things. We should see then that the world of multiplicity is deep rooted in a universe of unity that nothing happens by chance, that we live under a government of law, from the vast planetary system to a garden of roses, from the archangel, the Christ, to the saint and the sinner, through the good and what is called evil. Through cosmic activities and in human destinies, we behold the vast objective panorama of invisible but adequate subjective causes. We should not separate life from living, spirit from matter, nor divine principle from a universal creation. God is all in all. That is, God is and is in everything. The gardener finds a divine idea concealed in the seed. Loosed into action, this idea produces a plant. The geologist finds the imprint of invisible forces in the rock. The evolutionist reads the history of cosmic activities on this planet as they decipher the unfolding of an intelligent life force carrying creation forward to its consummation point here, which is the production of self-conscious life. The scientist finds an energy concealed in the atom, and the spiritual genus discloses an intuitive knowledge which can be accounted for only on the theory that we lie in the lap of an infinite intelligence. So close is the union of creation with the Creator that it is impossible to say where one begins and the other leaves off. Emerson tells us that nature is spirit reduced to its greatest thinness. And Spinoza says that mind and matter are the same thing. While Jesus proclaimed that the very words which he spoke were spirit and were life, Robert Browning writes, of the spark which we may desecrate but never quite lose. And he further announces that all are gods, though in the germ. Wordsworth sings the heaven sings that heaven is the native home of all mankind, and Tennyson exclaims that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams, while Shakespeare perceived sermons in stones and good in everything. We are on the verge of disclosing a spiritual universe, and will ultimately conclude that what we call the physical universe is a spontaneous emergence through evolution of inner forces which cannot be explained, but which must be accepted. How then can we doubt that the very mind which we now use is the intelligent principle from which all life draws its power to be and its intelligence to express? The furtherance of evolution depends upon our ability to sense a unity with nature and its forces. When the knowledge of this unity comes alike to all, 
the, th the th tread of armies will cease, and the bugle will echo the soft notes of familial love.